Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, today met the External Affairs Minister of the Republic of India, Dr. Subrahmanyam Jashinkar, at Rafah Palace on the sidelines of the External Affairs Minister's visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain. During the meeting, the Indian External Affairs Minister conveyed the condolences of the President of India, Ram Nath Kovind, to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, on the passing of His Royal Highness Prince. Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa. The Indian External Affairs Minister also conveyed his condolences to His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince. His Royal Highness emphasized the strength of ties between Bahrain and India, noting that bilateral cooperation continues to accelerate across various sectors. He highlighted that exchanges of visits between Bahrain and India on all levels continues to underpin joint cooperation and collaboration, which in turn advances further development and prosperity for both countries and their people. In this regard, His Royal Highness has welcomed the ongoing cooperation and coordination between Bahrain and India in combating COVID-19. The meeting also served as an opportunity to review the course of bilateral partnerships and methods to reinforce them in this regard. His Royal Highness reaffirmed the Kingdom's commitment to bolstering Bahraini-Indian ties across various areas which will contribute to increasing investment and opportunities. He also highlighted his appreciation for the role played by the Indian community within Bahrain and their efforts contributing towards the Kingdom's economic development. Regional and international topics of common interest were also discussed during the meeting. For his part, Dr. Jay Shankar expressed his gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and highlighted His Royal Highness's ongoing support towards ever-expanding ties between Bahrain and India. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Zayani, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, were also in attendance. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, made a statement in which he affirmed that Bahrain's experience in the field of youth and sports has become a model to be emulated across the region and the world. Thanks to the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, who has always been keen on supporting various initiatives and programs in this field as he regards the youth to be key to the process of further developing the country. His Highness said that Bahrain's Ministry of Youth and Sports Achievements of the Arab League's award for the best Arab governmental project that supports the youth, which was won along with the UAE, reflects the great leaps that the kingdom has undergone in this field, especially through its producing elite programs. His Highness said that the empowerment of youth in Bahrain has been successful in discovering and developing the citizens' potential through various initiatives that are designed to enhance their talents and to create world-class success stories. His Highness Sheikh Nasser added that the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports will continue to lay strategies and programs that will empower the youth to achieve further success through a variety of initiatives. The Deputy Prime Minister, His Highness Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, received the Minister of External Affairs of India, Subrahmanyam Jashankar. The Indian Minister conveyed the condolences of the Indian government over the passing of His Royal Highness, the late Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa. He remembered His Royal Highness, the late Prince's efforts in strengthening Bahraini Indian relations with much appreciation and added that he left a legacy of developmental achievements in all fields, locally and internationally. The meeting was also attended by Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Abdul Latif Al Zayani, along with the grandchildren of His Royal Highness, the late Prince. The bilateral relations have been discussed during the meeting, along with the role that His Royal Highness played in establishing and strengthening them. The Deputy Premier expressed thanks and appreciation to the Government of India for its condolences and wished his government and people further progress. He also praised the bilateral ties and their cooperation across the history in various fields, and especially the role that the Indian community in Bahrain has played in its process of development and progress.
The Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defense Force, the BDF Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, today attended the joint maritime drill, the Maritime Barrier, conducted by the BDF along with the Interior Ministry on Tuesday and Wednesday. Present was the Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagr Naimi. The Commander-in-Chief was briefed about the stages of the joint drill implemented to strengthen the maritime military system aimed at protecting the kingdom's territorial and economic waters against maritime infiltration, combating smuggling and piracy operations and ensuring rapid response to search and rescue operations. During the final phase of the joint exercise, the Commander-in-Chief was briefed on the practical applications and field operations carried out by the Royal Bahraini Naval Force, the RBNF, and Coastal Guards. Using fast and modern boats that contain the best electronic equipment, advanced military equipment, and advanced navigation devices, which contributed to the rapid implementation of tasks to address and confront various dangers and deal with hostile targets in the designated area of operation and training on the fastest methods in search operations and rescue methods for missing or injured persons. The Commander-in-Chief expressed his thanks and appreciation to all those involved in the joint drill for the tremendous efforts they had made as a result of the fruitful cooperation between the BDF and the Ministry of Interior stressing that the joint maritime operations will be a bulwark against all challenges to the Kingdom's security and stability. The Representatives' Council held its weekly session under the chairmanship of its speaker, Fozi Zainal. She raised the speech of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, which called for bolstering cooperation with the legislative authority to realize the aspirations of the people and continue to implement and develop the government's programs and projects with a wise foreign policy based on deep-rooted fraternal relations with brotherly countries. The Council reviewed the government's replies concerning the parliamentary questions. It also discussed the reports of several committees concerning draft laws and proposals. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Zayani, met with the Minister of External Affairs of India, Sub Rahmin Jishanikar, who is on official visit to the kingdom. Dr. Zayani hailed the deep rooted ties between Bahrain and India, which are based on mutual respect and joint coordination. He affirmed the kingdom's aspirations to enhance bilateral cooperation in various fields, commending the role of the Indian community in Bahrain and their important contributions to the development march of the kingdom. He wished the Republic of India and its friendly people further progress. And prosperity. For his part, the Indian minister expressed the condolences of the Indian government on the demise of the late His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, hailing his efforts and contributions that bolstered bilateral relations and cooperation. He highlighted the late prince's efforts to the local, regional and international levels. He underscored the depth of the Bahraini-Indian relations and their continuous developments at all levels. He also lauded the kingdom's honorable stances and his efforts in maintaining regional security, stability and prosperity, as well as promoting world peace. He also expressed the thanks and appreciation of the Indian government for the Bahraini government's care and support of the Indian community in Bahrain, which reflects the depth of bilateral relations. He also highlighted the efforts of the kingdom in maintaining the safety and health of Indian workers during the spread of the coronavirus. The meeting was attended by the Ministry of Cabinet Affairs Under Secretary Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Under Secretary for International Affairs Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Ministry Ministry of Foreign Affairs Under Secretary Dr. Sheikh Rana bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Ambassador of Bahrain to India, Abdurrahman Al Gaoud, and uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Director of Afro Asian Affairs, Ambassador Muna Abbas Ravi. Also were present were the Ambassador of India to Bahrain, Piyush Srivastava, and the visiting ministers accompanying delegation. Under the patronage of the Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the oil and gas holding company, Noga Holding, signed a memorandum of understanding with Air Products. The minister said that amid global challenges of greenhouse gas emissions and the increasing international recognition of hydrogen's benefits, this joint effort explores the viability of developing hydrogen as a sustainable fuel in the transport sector, as well as an avenue to the transition towards a lower carbon energy mix in Bahrain. He expressed pleasure to partner with Air Products, a leading global player who spearheads pioneering energy technologies and solutions. The minister added that the kingdom is committed to working collectively with the rest of the world to combat climate change. He expressed his keenness to collaborate with prominent international institutions on researches and innovations to leapfrog the development of the oil and gas sector.
Also in the presence of the oil minister, Noga Holding signed a joint study agreement with Chevron Middle East Business Development with the aim of evaluating the kingdom's future gas demand, identifying potential supply sources to meet these requirements and supporting a future supply chain for Bahrain's liquid liquefied natural gas LNG terminal. The minister welcomed the signing of this important agreement that supports the efforts of the kingdom of Bahrain in developing the natural gas national grid and enhances the national economy through collaboration with international expertise. He emphasized the importance of this agreement which ev evaluates the gas supply and demand in the local market. It creates a model for future strategic planning, decision making and ensuring continuous supply of natural gas in the kingdom. Given the impact of COVID-19 pandemic uh, to the oil and gas sector, the oil minister highlighted the importance of extended studies to combat the challenges. The National Oil and Gas Authority's investment arm, Noga Holding, signed a memorandum of understanding with Air Products to assess the potential development of hydrogen economy in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Signed two MOUs. The first MOU was with Air Products, uh, between Air Products and the National Oil and Gas Holding Company. Um, we, uh, we are looking through the MOU to study various opportunities in hydrogen production and the production of CO2, uh, CO2 sequestration. As you know, the uh, circular carbon economy is now a major topic, as was confirmed by the recent meeting of the G20, together with the climate change agenda. And we have in the past at the National Oil and Gas uh, Authority uh, done various projects with, uh, with the Supreme Council of the Environment, uh, with various other ministries in terms of the impact of, uh, of the environment and with air products we're looking at finding opportunities in the production of hydrogen uh, and the production of CO2 and the use of CO2 in, in the industry. Speaking on circular carbon economy, the Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed Khalifa Al Khalifa, highlighted that capturing carbon to improve the quality of natural gas has been practiced for decades, but the cutting edge technology carbon capture, utilization, and storage removes and sequesters carbon dioxide indefinitely, which makes it a game changer that turns waste product into marketable commercial or industrial products. Proactively ensuring there is an efficient plan and process in place, making sure this hydrogen becomes uh, more emission free, which is blue. We are looking at the mobility sector, which is essentially bringing uh, hydrogen uh, cars and vehicles here. We are also looking at the potential to have CO2 removing from the system, and last but not least, using the uh, LNG uh, as, a, as a source of, of, of diversification of the, of the kingdom. Moreover, the National Oil and Gas Authority signed an agreement with Chevron Middle East Business Development Company. The Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed Khalifa Al Khalifa, emphasized that this agreement is in line with numerous developmental needs and population increase, as well as efforts to establish a network of gas pipelines to connect Bahrain with the rest of the GCC countries. The second MOU was with Chevron. Chevron, of course, had to, has its long history with the Kingdom of Bahrain. They were the, com the company that discovered oil uh, back in the 30s. And they continue to uh, have uh, assets and investments here in Bahrain. We have recently signed an MOU to uh, jointly study the Khalij al-Bahrain unconventional field. This latest uh, signing is to do with studying the gas system in Bahrain to see what the future requirements of gas are, whether there will be need for LNG imports in the future, and how to optimize the entire gas system that is available in the kingdom. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, of course we have to thank our friends at the U.S. Embassy and the American Chamber of Commerce and the EDB uh, for helping us, uh, and of course Air Products together with Chevron for the uh, continuing partnership. In closing, Chevron reiterated its support to the Kingdom of Bahrain in both LNG and tied oil. As part of the development plans of Noga Holding, it signed today a memorandum of understanding with Air Products for the potential development of a hydrogen economy. Moreover, it signed a joint study agreement with Chevron. Hiva Abdel Bahrain International.
The Minister of Health, Faiqa Saleh, launched a report of the National Health Survey, which is among the key projects that the ministry has carried out along with the Information and E-Government Authority. Al Saleh affirmed that this survey represents, uh, represents intended to help in achieving the objectives of the government program as it contributes in enhancing the health database, helps in laying the foundation for our common database with the Information and E-Government Authority, and simplifies the procedures of the public and private sectors. The minister affirmed the minister Ministry's keenness on working together with all relevant parties locally, regionally and internationally in order to encourage society to become partners in drawing the future of the country's health sector. For his part, the chief executive of the Information and E-Government Authority, Mohamed Al-Qaid, said that the year 2018-2019 witnessed the execution of the biggest national health survey in 20 years in accordance with the WHO standards in order to evaluate the extent to which various diseases may spread. He said that the survey offers indicators for national performance which can contribute to the development of the health sector in the kingdom. The National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus today held a press conference at the Crown Prince Center for Training and Medical Research at the Bahrain Defense Force Hospital to provide an update on the COVID-19 response in the kingdom. The task force began by praising His Majesty the King's directives to provide a safe COVID-19 vaccine for all citizens and residents within the kingdom, which reflects His Majesty's continued support to the safety of the kingdom's community. The task force further praised His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's directive to allocate seats for frontline health workers and first responders and their families at the Formula One Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix and the Formula One Rolex Khir Grand Prix in appreciation of their tireless efforts in supporting the kingdom's national response to COVID-19. The Undersecretary of the Ministry of Health and member of the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, Dr. Walid al Manah, highlighted the kingdom's readiness to host both the Formula One Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix, adding that all precautionary and preventive measures and protocols have been adopted to ensure the health and safety of all. He further highlighted that the registration is open for frontline health workers and first responders and their families to attend both Formula One races by applying via the national volunteer platform. al Mana emphasized that the kingdom has ordered more than one million vaccines since last August from several companies and will be one of the first countries to receive the vaccines as soon as they are approved by the National Health Regulatory Authority. Authority and international health organizations. The infectious disease consultant and microbiologist at the BDF Hospital, a member of the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Manaf Al Gahbani, began his remarks by expressing gratitude to the Kingdom's frontline health workers and first responders for their efforts in combating COVID 19, adding that the Kingdom has made great progress across various areas to ensure the eradication of the virus. He spoke about the ability to report the result of rapid antigen tests via the new service launched by the Be Aware Bahrain app, which allows users to immediately send their test results to the Ministry of Health. Upon sending the results, an SMS report serial number is sent to the user, who is then contacted by a medical professional. Dr. Al-Ghathani noted that uh, reporting results of the rapid antigen tests are only required by those who test positive to ensure they receive the necessary assistance, and reporting is optional for those who test negative. He clarified that the list of pharmacies providing the rapid antigen testing kit is regularly updated on the Ministry of Health website, healthalert.gov.bh. Dr. Gahtani reiterated that the rapid antigen test does not substitute the PCR nasopharyngeal swab and that a positive rapid antigen result may not indicate infection and must be followed by a PCR test, which remains the official diagnostic test used in the kingdom. For her part, the consultant of infectious and internal diseases at Salmania Medical Complex and member of the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, Dr. Jamila Salman, also extended her gratitude to the Kingdom's first responders and their supporting staff for the sacrifices they have made to ensure the safety of all. She highlighted her confidence in Bahrain's capabilities of hosting the Formula One races during the exceptional circumstances presented by COVID-19. Dr. Salman noted that these two races will draw attention 
to Bahrain and its successes across various fields, particularly its national response to COVID-19, stressing that the Ministry of Health team has acquired a thorough understanding of the medical requirements and skills needed for this particular event. Dr. Salman further noted the importance of the role played by Team Bahrain's participating medical team, adding that the medical protocols adopted will ensure the success of this year's races. Dr. Salman added that the success of lowering infection rates has come as a collective and responsible effort of all in following health measures at all times. She emphasized the ministry's continued commitment to ensuring early detection of infection by expanding testing and treatment methods. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 1,510 with 149 recoveries, 130 registered new cases and one death. 49 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 85 are contacts of active cases and three are travel related. The deceased was a 55-year-old male citizen. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the family of the deceased and urges everyone to adhere to the rules and avoid public spaces when possible.